Okay, in the previous video, I introduced what was called the interquartile range. And I described it as a measure of spread. But the problem is it's not perfect. You do have um, a, an understanding of how spread out the data is with using the interquartile range. But if what you're doing is you've got this data and then you've got this other bit of data here. What you're doing is you're cutting out the middle 50% and saying, right, how far apart are those two points? That's effectively what the interquartile range is doing. And these points out here aren't considered. So I could add another point in, and it won't really change the interquartile range whatsoever. In fact, in all likelihood, likelihood, it won't make much difference. Really, what we want is a way of finding some way of, of measuring the spread of data so that it takes all of the points into account. So that's going to be the idea here. Now, let's say for argument's sake that, well, if these were my data and I know that the mean is here okay then what I could do is I could work out how much on average each of those points were away from the mean so I could work out these distances between each of the points and the mean and find the average of those points. So tell me how far, on average, each bit of data was away from the mean. That would be a useful bit of information. And it is this that we call the standard deviation. How much each point deviates away from the mean. So let's see how we could infer how that might be calculated. So. Let's say I've got some data. Um, how do I want to do this? Um, let's say I've got the numbers 5, 7, um, 22, 30, and 100. And I want to find the standard deviation of these five numbers. So the first thing that we've done is we found the mean. Okay, so I'm going to need the mean of these five numbers. So x bar is going to be 5 plus 7 plus 22 plus 30 plus 100, and then I'm going to divide that by 5, how many there are. Okay, so let's do that first. 5 plus 7 plus 22 plus 30 plus 100, then divide that by 5, and we get 32.8. Okay. So we've got our mean. So now what I want to do is I want to find how far each of, them, each of the points are away from the mean. So if these are my x's, I want to find that difference. So I'm going to take uh, the mean away from each of them. So I've got 5 take away 32.8. That's minus 27.8. Then I've got 7, take away 32.8, so that's minus 25.8. Then 22, take away 32.8, so that's minus 10.8. 30, take away 32.8, is minus 2.8. And then I've got 100, take away uh, 32.8, which makes the 67.2. Okay? So I've got that, but... These aren't telling me the distances because some of them are negative and one of them is positive. So that is a problem because if I now add them all up and divide by how many there are, well, which is what we anticipated might be the standard deviation. The problem is that these negative numbers are going to cancel out this positive one. Okay, and it's not going to give us the number that we need. We need all the distances to be positive. So it makes sense that in order to make something positive, uh, we have a nifty little function that will do that. 
you might be thinking that it's the modulus function. If you haven't heard of that, don't worry. But the modulus function is going to complicate things. What will be easier to work with is a squaring function. Because I know that if we square all of these, then I'm going to get even numbers. So I've got 27.8 squared, so that's 772.84. 25.8 squared is 665.64. 10.8 squared is 116.64. 2.8 squared is 7.84. And 67.2 squared is 4515.84. So that's made them all positive. And now I want to add them all up and divide by how many there are. So I want to add them all up, so that brings in the sigma. So add all of these together. 7.84 plus 116.64 plus 665.64 and 772.84. Okay, so that gets me to 6078.8. And then I want to divide by how many there are. Okay, so divide that in this case by 5. So 6078.8 divided by 5, because there's 5 numbers, is 1215.76. However, now what we have here is that this number clearly isn't showing us on average how far is each point away from the mean because clearly 22 is not or any of these numbers are nowhere near in the thousands away from the mean so it doesn't make much sense however what we want to do is because we squared it in this stage we eventually want to square root it so what we call this without the square root is the variance Okay, that is the variance, and the uh, symbol that we use is a lowercase sigma, and we write it as sigma squared for the variance. So if you want the standard deviation, then we need to square root our answer. Deviation, and that's sigma. So square root our answer, and we get 34.87 to two decimal places. And that would be your standard deviation for these numbers. Okay? So that makes a little bit more sense um, to say that on average these points are 34.87 away from the mean. Okay, that's how we can calculate it by hand, but obviously for a great many numbers, this is going to become really unwieldy. And so in the next bit, I'm going to show you how to do it on a calculator, on the TI-82. So we've just gone through a long calculation in order to find the standard deviation of these five numbers. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do on the calculator. And really that's what you need this calculator for in order to get around these quite complex calculations. So what we're first going to do is go to stat. Oh, turn the thing on first. Yep. Clear that. So stat. Then go to edit. Now I've already got information in my list. So if I press clear and then down, it should clear each of the lists quickly. So, I'm just going to type these five numbers into list 1. So, 5, 7, 22, 30, and 100. Okay? Then we're going to want to go to stat again. Go to calc, and our favourite, one variable stats. Then you're going to want to find L1, which is just above the 1. So, second button, L1, because that's the list that we wrote our five numbers into, press enter, 
and what you'll find is that as part of this information you will see sigma to be 34.8677514 so this is the calculation of the standard deviation that we were looking for if you wanted the variance you'd be able to square that number and that would be your variance but for the standard deviation it's the sigma x here